I'm 53.5 billion in July. Short covering, clearly a factor in the market's rally so far, but it's one factor. Uh, do you see short covering continuing to influence the market either to the upside or the downside? A lot of people, including you, believe we're set for a pullback in the next few weeks. Yeah, so the short cover covering is definitely going to be one of the phenomena that happens towards the tail end when people that have a fear of missing out jump into the market. But we remain constructive on the equity markets in the long term, but we do think that in the short term the market is poised for a correction because seasonally September is one of the weakest months of the year in the stock markets. And the S&P 500 has just had the best first seven months of the year since 1997. So a correction is definitely on the cards. All right. We have a big week for bond issuance this week, uh, starting today, actually. Uh, we have the three-year, but this week the three, the 10, and the 30-year auctions. Look at the three-year yield, 4.4%. That's a lot of competition for the equity market. How do you see this bond issuance impacting the markets? So we have clients right now that are really making use of their cash and taking advantage of these bond yields. But if you take a longer term uh, point of view, we think that there's plenty of opportunities in the equity markets right now, which will outperform the bonds in the long term. So we are looking at some of the less loved sectors in the market that haven't participated in the rally so far. Which we ones are, in particular? So a stock on our watch list that we really like is Home Depot, right? So Home Depot did really well during the pandemic because we were trapped in our home, homes and we wanted to make upgrades. Since then, the demand has subsided. But we see great long-term potential because in the U.S. we have a housing shortage and people have to upgrade their existing homes, which will benefit Home Depot. Okay, that's specialty retail. Are there any other areas that you see opportunities? Yes, yeah, so uh, these high-quality momentum names that have run up a lot, we would be looking at those uh, on a pullback as well. So stocks on our watch list, Apple and Meta. You know, Apple reported earnings. The street was disappointed because they saw iPhone sales declining. We actually were constructive because we saw their service business do well, and the gross margins on the service business are almost double of the, of the product uh, division. So we are constructive on Apple as well. Yeah, 8% growth in that services business, declines in the hardware business. You look at the iPad, 20% uh, decline when it comes to sales. But I do have to ask you, we're looking at Apple shares today. You're saying it's a buying opportunity. Shares down 6.5% almost in the last two days since the company reported earnings. Are you worried, even if this is a buying opportunity for Apple, are you worried this might be uh, a story where valuations are just too high, yields are rising, and it's starting to so show some cracks in this rally so far? Yeah, so we would be looking to add positions as the stock declines further. And we think that... Apple, though. Apple, yes. And Meta as well. We like Meta also, yes. What about some of the other high valuation names? Do you still feel the same about them? We're looking at an NVIDIA, um, you know, maybe in the Palantir, just reported earnings yesterday. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so NVIDIA is another stock on our watch list. We have it in clients' portfolios. We like th that as well. But, you know, that's run up quite a bit, so we'd wait a little bit more on that. But Meta, you spoke about Meta. I mean, Meta, they've had a phenomenal year. Look at this year has not only been great for them in terms of cutting their costs, but they've transitioned away from towards artificial intelligence to boost the ad revenues. And we think that's phenomenal for the company. All right, so... You're seeing some opportunities in some of those mega cap tech names that have really powered the rally. You're saying any pullback right now is a buying opportunity. Yeah. Um, and you don't believe that this bond issuance is competition for those stocks or any or for the equity market in general? We think it's competition in the short term, but in the long term, we think equities will outperform. Listen, the, the Fed waged a war against the 40-year high inflation by raising interest rates to a 22-year high. And it's quite clear that the Fed has won this war. Inflation has come down from 9% to 3%. Okay. Economy is still doing fine. But Adila, then I have to ask you, what's the catalyst for this pullback? It's not the bond issuance. You don't think it's the Fed. You seem to think that the Fed has things under control. It seems like you don't think there's going to be a rate hike. We have CPI coming up. If it comes in hotter than expected, is that the catalyst for this pullback that you're calling for? So we think it's a lot of it has to do with fatigue because the stock market does not go up in a straight line. So I think that at this point, the market will just be looking at excuses. Volume is thin. So we think the CPI and the PPI, if that, if that shows inflation is cooling off, that actually for the long term is going to be good because that means the Fed is done. But if it doesn't, that fuels the pullback you're calling for? That, that would fuel, okay. that could be one of the factors that could pull, right. fuel the pullback. A lot going on, Adil.